Welcome everyone to this week's Wednesday webinar. Today we're going to be talking about creating word templates within CRM. Now why use a word template and kind of what it is. They really are just a shell document that you're going to create within Word, but it pulls data fields from CRM and you can dictate which data fields you want it to pull in. It just eliminates having to manually type things out or you know, take data from CRM and try and plug it into other documents. Um, it's completely customizable. A lot of people like to use them because you can add logos and such things to that for when you're gonna give like a customer or a vendor some sort of documentation. Some of the things that I've seen Word templates used for is handing over like a case or an opportunity to like a production team, similar to like a work order, which there are work orders and things like that within CRM. But a lot of times people use this when the production team either needs to take something physical, like out to a field or to a warehouse, or if your production team doesn't have CRM license access, it's a way to pull that data and hand it over to them. Uh, we also see it with estimates or quotes. There is a quote entity within CRM, uh, but a lot of times that's just, you know, the screen that you use and view for entering. But if you want something a little more formal to print out for a customer and send to them, uh, that's when you would use a Word document in those types of cases. And another thing I've seen uh, is like drafted letters to clients, whether it's, you know, a thank you letter or maybe like a welcome letter or info kit, you know, containing like logins or setup information. You know, you really can use it for anything that you might need a document for that you need to pull that living data from the CRM. One thing with Word templates is that they only can be used on one record at a time. So I know CRM also has like Excel templates that is pulling a list of information Word templates, it's always going to be just one record at a time. So looking at the basic steps to create a template, and we're going to do a demo of this in just a moment, but so you have the steps here. The first important thing is to make sure that you have the developer tab turned on within Microsoft Word, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a moment. Um, that is what enables you to get to the data fields and do the XML mapping to pull in those CRM data fields. We're gonna download the template from the CRM, select all the entities, data fields that you want. We're gonna create it, and then we're gonna upload it back into CRM. So it's a very basic set of steps, but let's go ahead and dive into it so you can see how it would work. The first thing I wanna take a look at here is I've just got a blank Word document up, and I mentioned having the developer tab and you can see here along my toolbar, I don't have a developer tab showing. And a lot of times that isn't one that's always turned on. So unless you turn on, you may not see it. So if you go to File, Options, I'm gonna go to Customize Ribbon, and on the main tabs, you can see the developer option. And I'm just gonna check mark that, click OK, and now you can see that I have this developer tab as well. Okay, so within CRM here for the demo today, we're gonna to look at an opportunity. And, and really you can create a Word template on any entity. Uh, we're just gonna use an opportunity for today. And on the little ellipsis here, you can see Word templates is an option. And we're gonna to go to create our Word template. And here you actually could select to do an Excel or a Word template, but we're doing a Word template. And we want the entity to be opportunities. So we're gonna select that entity. And now on this screen, you also want to select related entities that you wanna use their data as well. So for instance, in this, we're using an opportunity, but we may want to get information from say the account, or the contact, things like that. So within this, these are all the relationships that are set up between other entities and your opportunity. Well, with our opportunity here. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to select an account. You can see there's multiple ones here, 
And an important thing to note when creating Microsoft Word templates is that everything is in its schema name. Um, so you do need to know from your forms, you know, what schema name is that? So you can see grayed off here, I wanna pull account and contact information. So I need to know what schema names are for these two boxes. So in my example, it's this parent account, and then we have a parent contact. And some of the other ones, you know, if you use a price list, if you're doing like a quote or, you know, anything that is related. The other thing I'm going to pick is I want the user that is our owning user. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the template here and we'll open it up. And I'm gonna enable editing. So it's just like any other blank Word document. We're gonna to go to that developer tab and we're gonna turn on this XML mapping pane. So here off to the right side, it just has some core properties but now since we download this a template, in this dropdown, you should see the URN Microsoft-CRM. So if we select that, you can now see opportunity. That was our original entity we selected. And if we expand that, these are all the fields that our CRM has for an opportunity. And at the very bottom, you can see here are those related entities, our owning user, our parent account, and our parent contact. And if we expand any of these, that gives us all the fields for that entity. So it can be a lot to go through when you're looking at the XML mapping pane. And again, everything is in the schema name, so it is important that you know what fields you're looking to pull from. Okay, well, let's go ahead and create a quick little document here. The first thing I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and insert our logo. That's the number one reason people usually use templates is so they can put their logo on something. So we'll insert our logo. And we're just gonna create a simple letter for this demo here. And we're gonna say we want to pull the contact name. And ours is under parent contact ID. And we want the name. And you right click on any field you wanna pull in. So I'm gonna right click on this insert the content, and I'm gonna choose plain text. The reason I recommend using plain text over rich text is the plain text, it doesn't have any formatting associated with it, so it's easier for everyone to use. Sometimes if you have a template that has like rich text and it has that formatting attached to it, not all users are able to view that right away. They have to have the rich text um, enabled. So I always recommend using plain text, and we can see it's popped up a box with that. So we're gonna do parent contact ID name, and then we're gonna add in the account name the same way. And then one of the reasons I pulled over those other entities is I also wanna put the address on here because this is something that I wanna be able to print out and give to like a receptionist or something to mail out for me. So I wanna make sure all information is on there. So from the contact here, I am gonna pull their address one. And anytime you're dealing with an address field, if you want all of it, look for composite. That adds all your address one fields together. So we've got name, company, and address in there. So now I'm just gonna type up a quick letter and I'm gonna say dear, and instead of repeating the contact's full name, one of the fields within your contact is a first name. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that one in. Okay, dear first name, we're gonna say, gonna thank them for their recent purchase. Probably don't need to redo the company name, but we wanna have a letter that's a little bit long here. And then we're just gonna let them know that a welcome kit will be mailed to them. Okay. 
Okay, and really this can be anything you want. Um, a lot of times, like I said, you know, a welcome letter is usually popular. It has a lot of like the legal disclaimers, things like that, so they can be really long. Um, it's always important that you're checking either with like an executive team or if you have a legal team, you know, when creating things like this to make sure you're not anything written you would be liable for. So it's always good to think that through. So we're gonna say if you have any questions, email me. And with this, this is why I grabbed the user information. What I'm gonna do in our user profile, I'm doing an email, but if your company adds in like phone numbers, um, I've seen some companies that do that have phone numbers in their user profiles as well. Um, maybe like their office lines, you could input uh, a phone number that it would pull for that owning user so you wouldn't have to look that up. For the sake of this, we are going to go ahead and do an email or call me and we'll say this is an office number. And then we'll just end the letter. And from that owning user, what I'm actually gonna do is under opportunity, I'm just gonna select owning user and then I'll put who the owner is of that opportunity, their name here. Oh. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Okay, so we have a really basic template put together. And now what we want to do is we're gonna add it back into the CRM so we can begin to use that. So let's go back to your CRM here. Now there's two different types of templates you can do. You can have a personal template or you can have ones at the organization level um, that others can use. So that's something to always consider as well. If you're entering it as a personal template here within the opportunity, in the same place that we downloaded the template to create, we're gonna to go to create word template, but now we're gonna go ahead and upload. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that here. We're gonna upload. You can see it's activated. Uh, you can rename it. I'm just gonna say this is the personal template. And we'll save that. Okay. Now, if you wanted to upload something to be at the organizational level, you go to settings, templates, and document templates. And then we would upload a template from here. So I'm actually gonna browse and pull that same file to upload. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and name organizational, just so we can tell, oops, if I can type. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead, go back to our opportunity here. And now when we go to Word Templates, it hasn't updated. I know sometimes when you're creating templates right away, you have to refresh the page a couple times. Sometimes you do even need to log out of the system, but I'm hoping that this will update for us just by refreshing. Okay. So now we can see the templates. The one that we down or uploaded to the organizational level, you see it's under just Word templates. And then if you have personal templates, it just says personal Word templates. So let's go ahead and do the organizational one. And here you can see what it looks like when uh, that data is filled in. So we can see it's got the contact name, Jenny Johnson, the account, their address, dear Jenny, all the information we typed in. It pulled in my email address 
and pulled in my name as the only user. So that's just how you can have it automatically fill in from those data fields. You know, if you're doing quotes or things like that, you can have it pulling in um, quote information, price information. You can create tables and, you know, anything that you really can do in Microsoft Word, you can create in this template and pull those fields in. So now that we've seen how these templates work, let's just take a look at managing templates. So you can wind up, if you just are adding, um, the thing with templates is they're not easy to edit. You can't go into, for example here, we'll go into the organizational templates. So if we pull up this opportunity one we just did, we can't go in and edit the Word document, the shell. You can't just update. So if you need to make some changes to what you have written or the fields you're pulling in, you need to upload a new template and then you would need to deactivate this one. So it's very easy here for the system templates. When you're within this document templates, all of them are here. So we could go to like this opportunity organizational one where it says edit, that just opens this telling us if it's activated or not. You can deactivate it, you can delete it. I usually don't recommend deleting things unless they were completely done in error. If you're just updating it, I always recommend deactivating it so you have that historical data of here's the template we used previously. When you deactivate something, it is in the status of draft. Now for personal templates that you've created, those are a little bit more obscure to find. You go to your advanced filter area here. And you can see it's on document templates because that's what we were in. But if we look at the results here for the document templates, we're not gonna see our personal one. We're just gonna see all the organizational ones. So what you're looking for in this list is gonna be personal document templates. Show our results. And here's where we can see that personal template that we uh, that we uploaded. And from here, you can deactivate it. If you edit it, it just pulls up that box again that shows if it's active or not. You can share it with other users. So maybe you have just a team of three that you want to use one particular template. You could have it be a personal template with for maybe a manager and share it with the team. You can assign it to other people if you want to create it and then not have it as a personal template. You can just move it over to someone else by assigning it to them and you can deactivate and delete them. You don't have to pull them up to take that action on them. You can delete and deactivate from here, share um, as well, and assign as well. So all of those options are available within this advanced filter area. So really word templates, they're pretty straightforward. A lot of this is just gonna go into you know, what exactly you wanna create, what you wanna have out there, and when you might have a use for it. I know in this day and age, a lot of us are moving more to, you know, all electronic. We want to do emails or, you know, data just stored electronically. We don't like to deal with a lot of paper. Um, so really think through your process and when you might need something, you know, Word documents, they can be saved and attached via email if you want. Um, but really, a lot of times it's used for printing out things that you may want customer facing. Um, because you can create them a little more formal and add in your logo. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, well, if you do have any questions um, afterwards, feel free to reach out to me and I will definitely help you through creating word templates. Thank you so much for attending today and everybody have a great day.